everyone welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching I'm hoping the sound is good today I've got my mic on and it looks like it's recording but I have the window open so we might hear some traffic sounds we might hear honking we might hear sort of rev heads in their big cars racing down the street I have no idea but I can't close the window because it is so hot here in London. We are going through an absolute heat wave. And believe me, if there's anyone you think who could handle heat, it should be me. I grew up in Australia. I'm Indian. All my ancestry is Indian. I mean, come on, I should be able to take hot weather, right? But I'm struggling. <laughs> I think that just goes to show you that I've been living in this country for far too long. Okay, I'm gonna get stuck into the moon signs. So if you don't know your moon sign, then click in the description below and I will leave a link for you to be able to find your moon sign. The other thing is that if you go in the description below, I'm gonna create a series of jump links or quick links so that you'll just be able to click on your sign and watch your bit and then carry on with your day. And as many of us do, we sometimes check on our partners and families and all that kind of thing. So do have a look at the news for everyone that you care about. So I'm not going to do too much of an intro <clears throat> today. Look at that. It's hot and I'm choking. This is terrible. I'm going to get stuck into Aries Moon. So Aries Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm going to take you through some of the faster moving planets and today we're going to have a look at Jupiter and we're going to do a little Saturn check-in. We're just going to see how Saturn's going. Saturn is, you know, he stays in the sign for two and a half years so we're just going to check in, do a little overview uh, because last time I think we did Rahu Ketu Axis, we did a little moon thing and we did Mars. This time I'm taking Mars Rahu Ketu into the big overview and we're going to get stuck in to your faster moving planets right now. So the sun for you, uh, July 16th to 17th is gonna shift from your third house to the fourth house. So if we take a look at what's happening here, this is a good placement for you. Uh, when sun's in the third house, this is very good. Your efforts are rewarded, uh, you know, things are going good there, but then that transit into the fourth house is going to be the start potentially of some mild tensions, some worries. These worries might be around property matters. Uh, it's not the best time to travel. Of course, when it comes to essential travel, go. There's no problem there. Um, but it's just, you know, if you're looking for a, a trip to get away kind of thing, uh, that's the kind of thing you might want to, might want to, Put off until say you know August um, August September trends might be better then but um, the other thing with the Sun here is that there could be tensions around your mother it's either possibly arguments with mum it's possibly I'm just going to move the camera over a little bit sorry possibly arguments with mum it could be um, worries about her health that sort of thing so it's just that that relationship with the mother you know you're either going to be concerned about her or there could be some tensions or arguments there let's take a look at mercury for you mercury stays in the fourth house fantastic yes now if you remember last month mercury i think went through three houses mercury can cover a lot of ground quickly now because of mercury's retrograde mercury is staying in the fourth house so you've got an entire month with Mercury in the fourth house here. And this is fantastic. This is a wonderful energy for you. So new opportunities, income is looking really good, money, growth, business growth, great for education and great for property. Okay, so we've got sun here and yes, sun I did say property but then this is great for property too, great for education. Okay, so this is the kind of thing where if you're having issues, it could be the sun. 
uh, you know what I mean? Sometimes we're looking for not where to lay blame, but I mean, you know, sometimes that can happen. It can also happen that depending on your planetary makeup, so if you're a really strong sun person, then you'll be quite affected by the sun. If your mercury is stronger, then that will be better. If you want to strengthen up your mercury, then I've created some meditations just for that. So have a look at the description below and I'm going to link to my meditations. So those are just meditations affirming that planet's energy at its best, right? And it will help give you affirmations for your subconscious mind so that you can boost that energy. Okay, so that's how that works. Um, let's take a look at Venus. Venus is fantastic. Okay, July 4th shifts from the 4th to the 5th house. So Venus, Mercury together here are beautiful. And we're looking at Venus and, I mean, this is fantastic. It's happiness. It's great time with your family. It's a terrific time for romance. Beautiful. If you are single, get out and mingle. Uh, it's really time to get out and meet people. And, you know, when friends invite you out, say yes. You know, that's what this time is all about. And I mean that, if your sun is really strong, for example, and, and you've got a lot of that solar energy, uh, definitely going out with friends is going to be a really nice thing for you. And Venus and Mercury are going to make sure you have a good time. Let's take a look at your slow moving planets. We've got Jupiter in your seventh house going forward uh, July 11th. <clears throat> so basically... Jupiter has been retrograde for a little while and he's finally going forward June 11th, July 11th. This is very good. Did I say June? I mean July. Um, this is great. Hopefully Jupiter is strong in your chart. Hopefully you really respond to Jupiterian energy because this is a terrific time for you, especially after June 11th. Um, you'll have a bit of a free run, a freer run. You know, great time for business growth, great time to be working with business partners, great time to be attracting and meeting business partners. Anything to do with partnership is fantastic right now and Jupiter is just going to expand the good effects of all of that. Great time to get married, well, or to meet the one, you know. Uh, oh, that's big, meet the one, whoa. Um, I'm going to say it, I'm going to say it, this is a good time for marriage, this is a good time to meet somebody, this is a good time uh, for all that kind of thing. So enjoy that aspect of your life. Good health, hopefully. Um, hopefully your health is doing well and that's looking like it's quite possible. <clears throat> that's looking like that's there for you because the other planets aren't causing too much, except for the sun, but other planets aren't causing too much trouble. So this is good. Good health, good travel. Uh, even though I did say with the sun, look out for travel, but Overall, it's looking good. You've got Jupiter and Mercury backing you up there when it comes to travel, so this is great. Uh, let's do a little check-in with Saturn now. Um, slow moving Saturn, good old slow Saturn. We're just going to breeze on through Saturn and see what he's up to because I think a couple of months ago we had a look at him and we're back checking in now. So ninth house is where Saturn is. And this is just basically some routine stuff here. Keep an eye on your expenses. Um, again, some mild background worries and tensions. You know, when that's just in the background and you're not sure what's going on in a long-term sense, that's what this is. Uh, but what it's all encouraging you to do is to keep being spiritual, keep doing things like watching astrology videos. Very, very good. Um, keep studying take a look at your own chart if you can um, anything that you feel inclined to do that's spiritual this is a really great time to be getting into that I mean the ninth house my goodness this is wonderful it's also a terrific time to start if you're not already in a yoga practice or doing some physical yoga it's a really good idea I have been doing my yoga once or twice a day for the last few weeks and I've been doing that because Mars is exalted and I'm going to talk about Mars in the bigger overview so do watch that bigger overview but um, yeah I mean really now's a great time to be starting an exercise routine type thing the other thing you could do is um, doing the breathing yoga just concentrate on that if you master your breath you've really got control over your whole life 
So breathing exercises are basically going to take care of uh, any tensions that the Sun and Saturn are bringing your way. So Aries Moon, thank you so much for stopping by. Really appreciate that you've come to check out your chart. Thank you for coming to me to do that. There we go, the window's open, you can hear horns already, huh? Okay, uh, I would like to welcome Taurus Moon. Welcome Taurus Moon, thank you so much for joining us. Now, if you missed my intro, Taurus Moon, I just want to apologize and say that the window is open, so we might hear some horns or uh, rev heads going really fast down the street. Not much I can do. Taurus Moon, what have we got in store for you? I think it's looking fairly good from what I remember when I was putting all of this together. So Sun, what's the Sun doing? We're going to have a look at your faster moving planets, then we're going to touch on Jupiter and Saturn. If you want to check out Mars, Ketu and Rahu, have a look at the big overview. So Sun, July 16 to 17 is shifting from your second house to the third house. So you've possibly been experiencing some financial hurdles. Money has quite possibly been tight for you lately. Uh, that would make perfect sense because the sun doesn't particularly like being in the second house. It kind of dries things up and uh, possibly has been drying up your money, which is not great. But sun is going to move into the third house for you. So this is fantastic. You're going to start feeling some progress again, feeling progress on the work front, time for promotions, uh, we're talking good health, you know, good social scene, good times out with friends. You've got a lot to look forward to. And if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, this is a great time to be going out with your friends. And equally, if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, you can enjoy some cozy nights in and have your friends around and, uh, you know, hot chocolates in cafes and all that kind of fun stuff. So sun is looking good for you. Let's have a look at Mercury. Mercury is going to remain in the third house. Um, interestingly, Mercury did quite a big, you know, last time he kind of went through three houses and he, he can cover a lot of ground fast. The young prince that is Mercury. Uh, but now because of retrograde, he is really staying in your third house. So what does this mean? Is this not ideal uh, for you? If So if you are feeling low in energy, if you are feeling tired or drained or any of that, this could quite possibly be why. could be, um, you know, if Mercury is weak in your natal chart, this, this might have something to do with that. Uh, not a great time for travel. It's not ideal, but if you have to travel, travel. You know, essential travel, you can, of course. Just be careful, that's all. Um, check and recheck get to the airport early, all that kind of thing. Watch your relationship with spouse and co-workers. Yeah, absolutely. This is this is a time just to concentrate on your people skills a bit. Um, but I mean, gosh, Taurus Moon, you've probably got all that down anyway. You're probably brilliant with people, I know. But um, it, it's just because of Mercury's placement here and if Mercury does affect you, then... Um, then you know you, you'll want to just put in a bit of extra effort when it comes to relationships basically I think that's what I'm trying to say there uh, Venus let's have a look at Venus on July the 4th is Venus is shifting from the third house to the fourth house so this is great and I'm really hoping you've got a lovely healthy wonderful beautiful awake Venus in your chart so you'll be able to take advantage of all of this have a look at this, you know, uh, good luck, good news, gains from friends, wish fulfillment, great time with your family, uh, boost your income. You know, Venus is really treating you right now. So I hope you've got a delightful Venus in your chart. And, you know, sometimes I've seen this when Venus, say, for example, is debilitated, but it might be in a miracle degree, it might be zero to one degree, something like that. Venus will still very much deliver in that position, I believe. Um, that's definitely what I've seen uh, in my experience. Okay, let's take a look at Jupiter and Saturn. Jupiter on the 6th is going to go forward. So Jupiter has been in retrograde, as we all know, and is going forward July the 11th. So what has this meant for you? Um, you've probably been experiencing... So if you have been experiencing high expenses, which you would have done from your son anyway... Um, <clears throat> got here Jupiter high expenses 
health issues potentially and that can just be as much as an energy drain um, or it could be <clears throat> it could be that you're choking on something and you need a glass of water mm. my apologies I don't know uh, I'm not a hay fever sufferer but you know I don't know an example of some health issues live on this vlog um, an expansion of problems, enemies, issues, yeah. Jupiter in the sixth. Jupiter's not happy in the sixth, right? That's definitely what we've got going on here. So if you've been experiencing troublesome things, you could very well blame it on the sun. You can blame it on Jupiter as well. Um, if these energies are for some reason weak in your chart and you've been experiencing particularly difficulties, what you can do is you can have a listen to my meditations. I'm going to leave a link to them below. And those are just designed to boost planetary energy. So in a monthly, if I say, mm, this planet isn't really working out for you this month, you know, you can listen to that. Um, just before you fall asleep and that kind of thing you know it's, it's nice to have a little meditation that basically defines that planet's energy at its best and it kind of reconditions your subconscious mind with positive affirmations so you can have a look at those if you like uh, let's have a look at Saturn do a little Saturn check-in so now Saturn in the eighth house okay yeah Saturn's in your eighth house for sure all right so yeah look if you're looking for planets to blame <laughs> we've got the sun not helping you out we've got jupiter not helping you out saturn again could be um causing things to be a bit low energy saturn's not thrilled to be in the eighth house uh work the work scene might be tough for you especially if you're self-employed you might be finding that it's kind of hard to get business right now the other thing is that um, if you are self-employed or if you're going through a career transition this is actually good for you a lot of people transition careers uh, at this point in time it'll be hard if you do but um, but you will be able to people have done that I, I have uh, I know of some some people's charts and, and seen that personally so hang in there and work hard and if you need a good book and if you need some uh, inspiration rich dad poor dad how about it i haven't mentioned him in any of the other signs i don't know if i'll be bringing him up for the other signs but uh, it's relevant for you so and next month i have i don't do any of those amazon links or anything but maybe i'll start that in the future so yeah um definitely that could be a good book for you right now restructuring finance other people's money eighth house it's all that kind of thing eight nine ten yeah and that's career that is spotlight that's career for you so yeah definitely looking at how you handle finances that could be a really good thing for you at this time Taurus moon so I hope you have a good month and I hope your energy picks up remember if you're feeling tired just rest um, you know be kind to yourself okay we're gonna have a look at Gemini moon welcome Gemini moon thank you so much for joining us now we're going to take a little look at your slower moving planets and the fa uh, faster moving planets and then the slower moving planets we're going to take a look at Jupiter and Saturn because we're going to do Mars Rahu Ketu in the big overview and I want to apologize as well if you hear any honking or really loud cars going down I've got a major road over there could get a bit noisy but London is so hot right now I had to leave the window open so let's take a look at what's happening with your planets. The sun on July 16 to 17 is shifting from your first house to the second house. What does this mean for you? This is, this is looking like you've had, due to the sun, you've possibly had some stress uh, to do with your work. Possibly been having some health issues, maybe a little bit of a health drain or you're tired or you know, not sleeping great, uh, possibly some financial hurdles as well. But let's have a look. No, it, it doesn't look like it's going to particularly get any better. Sun is going into the second house there. So this is really a good time for you to be financially conservative if the sun is a really strong planet for you. Uh, it's also possibly a good time to avoid travel or too much indulgence if you have to travel do essential travel is always okay this is when when a 
prediction comes like this, you know, avoid travel. That's kind of like the, the frivolous travel that you can delay for a month, you know. Um, the kind of, oh, I fancy taking a trip to get away from it all. It's like you might want to wait a month for that. But, you know, if it's business or family related, um, then, of course, go. That's fine. Let's have a look at what your other planets are doing. Mercury stays in the second house due to its retrograde July the 26th. So last time, I've <clears throat> got a bit of a frog in my throat, sorry about this. Uh, last time we had Mercury cover a lot of ground. He covered um, three houses. Now he's going to stay in your second house for the whole time. And this is really good for you. This is really good for you. So good income, uh, appreciation from your co-workers, great to learn, great for learning, students, learning new things, any of that. Um, communication, good time to communicate. Communication can be a source of profit. Um, yeah, you can communicate so well that, you know, you turn that into a line of work. And that could be, that could be starting your own YouTube channel. Come on, do it. It's so much fun. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is great. Your mercurial energy is having a lovely time. And so it should, Gemini Moon. This is wonderful. Let's take a look at Venus for you. July 4th is shifting. So Venus is going to shift from the second house to the third house. Um, and this is beautiful. This is really, really lovely energy. So now's the time to go shopping, quite possibly. Uh, new clothes, if you fancy some new clothes. Uh, gemstones, my goodness, you might be shopping for gemstones. And by gemstones, do you know, do you know where I shop for my gemstones? I'm actually wearing a gemstone right now. I'm wearing Howlite. I buy mine from uh, eBay. And I bought this for like, I think it was like, four pounds or something like that and then I made the little bale that that, um, that sticks so it's just a palm stone so I kind of made it myself so that's just a little tip there I'm not telling any of the other signs about this it's our secret Gemini okay so um, yeah because I, I mean I don't think I'm mentioning gemstones for anybody else this time uh, great time for romance thanks to Venus so this is beautiful um, and Venus is spending the whole month, basically, after July the 4th. I'm pretty sure it was the whole month that I saw, yeah. So beautiful. This is great. Great time uh, to meet new friends. And did I say good time for romance? I'm, I hope I did. Great time to meet someone really special, you know. So singles, get out and mingle. Um, great time for business growth. Good time for socializing, hobbies, fun, all that kind of stuff. So that's fantastic. Let's have a look at your Jupiter and Saturn. This is looking quite good. Your Jupiter is looking absolutely beautiful. Lucky you, Gemini Moon. Gemini Moon, your Jupiter is in the fifth house and it's currently retrograde. It's going to go forward July the 11th. So Perhaps you've been reviewing things um, in this area of your life to do with creativity, perhaps your kids, perhaps education, all that kind of thing. But basically what you can expect is to really enjoy this month uh, when it comes to your Jupiter. All areas of your life should be steadily improving and, and the benefits associated with them expanding, right? So great time to spend with your children, uh, great time for education, great time to be learning something new. Terrific for money. My apologies, Gemini Moon. The camera just cut out. And I think I was talking about money. I think I was saying that your finances are going to go high. Uh, so that's great. That's really good. Money's looking really good for you. Um, Jupiter in the 5th going forward. So Jupiter retrograde in the 5th going forward July 11th. Yeah. This is good. This is a really nice placement for Jupiter. It's great to have Jupiter in this spot. I think he's going to be there for quite a while. So you're really going to benefit and profit from his presence here. Oh, apologies about that. I don't know if you could hear. 
This is the problem when I leave the window open. Actually, I might close the window because, sorry, it's just too crazy. I don't, I don't think I'm going to melt. I think, I think I'm going to be fine. Sorry, I just had to do that. <laughs> right, so it's all going on in your particular one. The camera died and I had to close the window. Chaos, look at that. Which planet can we blame? Um, I think we can blame the sun. <laughs> I think we can blame Gemini, moon, sun. Uh, let's take a look at Saturn. Okay, so we're just going to do a little check-in. We're going to see how Saturn's doing because we saw him, we were with him a couple of months ago. And let's have a look. So, yeah, I mean, if there's any tension in your life, um, Saturn is in your seventh house and the tension could be around your spouse, your significant other, um, could be to do with your work, especially if you're self-employed, if you're in a business partnership of any kind. Um, this is not a time to take shortcuts. Not that you would, but just in case. And this is also very much a time for hard work, effort, patience. And it's the kind of hard work when it comes to Saturn, it's kind of you've got to think compound interest with Saturn. You've got to think, I'm doing a little bit each day towards my goal. And with Saturn, you're really thinking mastery of a skill. You know, um, you don't become a jazz pianist overnight. It takes a lot of time. So it's that kind of thing. Uh, it's good for people who are salaried in salaried jobs and professions, though. I mean, that's just going to be consistent and stable, hopefully. So that was your overview, Gemini Moon. I hope you're going to enjoy that Venus energy. My goodness, it's looking so beautiful. And I wish you well. All right, so Cancer Moon. Welcome, Cancer Moon. Thank you so much for joining us. Now, I'm just going to get straight into your faster moving planets. This time we're going to take a look at Sun, Mercury and Venus. And then for slower moving, we're going to look at Jupiter and Saturn. And I'm covering Mars, Rahu Ketu in the bigger overview. So Sun, let's take a little look here. Sun is moving July 16th to 17th, shifting from your 12th house to the first house. Uh, is this looking good? This is looking, yeah, I mean, if you're going to have any source of tensions or worries or any of that, it could well be coming from the sun. The sun might um, potentially have a bit of a drain on your health and your energy and your well-being. Um, you could have some sleepless nights, potentially. Uh, I hope I'm not planting that as a seed or anything like that. Hang on, I'm just going to shift the camera a bit. Uh, I hope I'm not planting that as a seed or anything like that or, or giving uh, the subconscious mind a suggestion. But, I mean, the thing is that if that's happening, you'll know why. It might be due to the sun's position, and that's good to know because the sun is going to transition out of here and you're going to have brighter days for sure. Uh, it's just that for the month of July, you're going to, yeah, you're going to want to pay a bit more attention to your health. So that's the kind of thing where if the co-workers are asking you to go out on a Friday night and you're feeling a little bit tired, you know, go home and don't feel guilty and don't feel pressured, you know. Go home and nurture yourself. It's perfectly okay to do that. There'll be many other opportunities. Um, also, not, not a great time to overspend or overindulge financially. Let's take a look at Mercury. So Mercury... He's going to stay in your first house. Last time he covered a lot of ground. He went across three different houses. This time he's really staying in the first because there's going to be a retrograde happening July the 26th. So he's kind of almost going to go out and then he's going to come back in. Uh, and we're looking at, yeah, Mercury isn't thrilled to be in the first house. I'll tell you that. Um, there could be a little bit of stress, could be a little bit of dip in finances. If, say, for example, you're self-employed, um, Nothing major, but just, just a little dip. Uh, this may not be the ideal time to travel. Um, of course, if you have to, for work reasons or family reasons, then you do. But it's that kind of frivolous travel. It's that kind of, oh, I just want a little getaway. Maybe, maybe there are better times to do that. Um, you also want to be alert on your social scene. Just be careful with your friends. Um, just be watchful and mindful and observe and, and you know, 
be good with the friends. Friends, friends could be could be a bit tricky at this time. Um, let's have a look at Venus. Venus, uh, July the fourth is shifting from your first house to the second house. So this is really really good. This is lovely. I'm so happy for you because after that news of Sun and Mercury, you need some good news, Cancer Moon, and you've got some good news here with Venus. So Venus is definitely an energy to tune into. And by the way, if ever I say that there's a planet that's not so strong, um, what you can do is go in the description below and I'm going to link you through to all of my meditations, my planet meditations. And they are designed to boost any planetary energy that's not doing so well for you. So if I said, for example, Mercury, not great, then what you can do is you can listen to the Mercury meditation. And that basically has a series of affirmations that's designed to condition your subconscious mind to, to feature the healthy energy of Mars. You know, it, Mercury, sorry, or Mars. I mean, Mars is going to be interesting for all of us this month. So uh, definitely Mars will be a good one to tune into. But the reason that these meditations are kind of cool is that if I say that, oh, there's this planet that's not doing so great, you can use your free will to top up that energy. So you can have a look at those um, meditations if you'd like to. It's the kind of thing you would fall asleep to. You don't even have to really be listening. Have it on in the background uh, because your subconscious mind will pick up everything. So Venus. I mean, Venus is beautiful. Did I go through Venus? Let me go through Venus. Venus, July 4th, shift from your first house to the second house. I mean, this is beautiful. So um, if there's money coming in, increase in wealth, all that kind of thing, this will be why. Um, this should be a happy time uh, when it comes to Venus. It's a good time for education. It's a great time to be with the one that you love, your special someone. A uh, good time to be with them. So that's always good. Um, great time for new clothes. Yes, boost to money. Enjoy music. Enjoy being social. Enjoy family. Enjoy gemstones. Absolutely. Uh, and gemstones, you know, let's let's not think of sapphires. It could be simple how light. It's very cost effective. I bought mine from eBay. <laughs> um, let's have a look at Jupiter and Saturn now, you slower moving planets. Jupiter on July the 11th is going to go forward for you. Jupiter is retrograde right now and Jupiter is in your fourth house. So what does this mean? Yes, this is a mixture of results. That's exactly what I thought. This is a time really to take care of yourself, slow down a little bit. So if, if things aren't brilliant, then yes, your Jupiter might be at play and Jupiter uh, is giving you mixed results right now. So this is really just a time to go easy. It's time to go slow. Um, as I said earlier, you know, the friends ask you out uh, when I was talking about the sun, you might want to stay home. That's perfectly fine. Um, be careful with property matters. So don't be in a rush and especially don't be in a rush with Mars in retrograde <clears throat> coming up. So I am going to talk about that in the bigger overview. Um, I'm recording the little mini ones first this time. Uh, so let's have a look here. Be careful with property. Be careful with travel. Be careful with anything in connection with your mum. Hopefully her health stays good. Um, but if her health is impacted in any way, you've got a bit of a reason as to why that may be so. Uh, be careful with your finances as well. Let's have a little check in with what Saturn's doing. I think we caught up with him a couple of months ago. Um, I don't think I had him in your mini report last time. Uh, so let's have a look at Saturn is in your sixth house. Oh, this is wonderful. Oh, this is a platform building time. Good for you. This is great. Saturn's happy here. Uh, happy days when it comes to Saturn. And Saturn is the one that I believe materially you can achieve the most with Saturn. This could potentially be quite a platform building time. So this could be a time when you, um, you know, get promotions, you overcome difficulties, you get more money coming in and ideally you invest that money. Do you know what I mean? If you can, and I know I've just said be careful with property, but uh, don't worry because I think Saturn will still be here for a while and um, could be after Mars retrograde and I'm pretty sure I, for, oh, I haven't got the notes for that but Mars don't worry because Mars is gonna I think it's at the end of August 
I'm not 100% sure. But basically, this is good because Saturn is going to be here for a while. Do you know what? Let me, should I just check it quickly? I'll check it for you, Cancer Moon. How about I? I'm going to be really quick. I'm spending extra time with you. Oh dear. Uh, let's have a look. Saturn is going to be, I mean, look, Saturn's here for ages. Yeah, I'm until 2019. You've got time. You've got heaps of time. There's no need to worry. When's he leaving? Oh, he does a retrograde. He's in here for ages. Oh, well, lucky you. Look at that, till 2020. Oh my God. Oh, well, that's January 2020. Hello, lucky you. Good stuff, Cancer Moon. Well, I'm, you know, don't worry about these little ups and downs of the small planets. You've got a big planet on your side right now. I'm very glad that for some reason I was inspired to check that because with all the other signs, I'm not doing any checking. And um, there's someone on here there's someone on here that needed that. So go you and, and good luck and enjoy building a new platform in your life. So I wish you well, Cancer Moon. Thanks very much for stopping by. And now we are going to say hello to Leo Moon. Leo Moon, welcome. Welcome to your little mini report. I'm going to fly through here because uh, I've spent extra time on it everyone else. So I'm going to have to compensate and spend less time with you. <laughs> The last thing a Leo moon would want to hear. No, come on. I'm going to spend equal amount of time with you. Of course I am. I mean, look, things are looking pretty good for you, Leo moon. Let's take a look. Sun, uh, July 16th to 17th is shifting from your 11th house to the 12th house. So, okay. Well, I mean, look, sun's not thrilled and, and that's okay. Um, you know, things might slow down a little bit Uh you know, you might not get the recognition from your boss that you want. Business may not be so high. I mean, I, I think the sun's having a good time in the 11th there, but when he goes into the 12th, that's when things are going to slow down. And health-wise, things might be a little bit, you know, you might be a bit run down, you might be a bit tired, um, sleeplessness. Great time for your spirituality, though. Great time to, for example, continue watching astrology videos like this, um, you know, duvet days where you're watching YouTube and you're indulging in all manner of spiritual and, uh, you know, wisdom-based content. So that's, it's not so bad. Uh, Mercury, let's have a look, stays in your 12th house due to retrograde July 26th. Yeah, so last time Mercury covered like the ground of three houses and now because of the retrograde, Mars is going to, kind of just hang out here in this uh, 12th house so he doesn't quite go out he comes back so you're spending a lot of time in your 12th house and yeah this this is not ideal uh you know so any tensions you could blame on the sun or mercury um you know dip in your health possibly a dip in your wealth um a time when enemies crop up out of nowhere or, or confrontations have to happen uh, that can happen um, perhaps a tricky time with your spouse significant other you may travel but it'll be a different outcome to what you're expecting so there's that aspect as well um, again mercury here this is a terrific time to get spiritual so that is quite the theme here and anytime i say that an energy is compromised in your chart I've created a series of meditations, which I'm going to link to below. So you just have to click on the description and there'll be a whole bunch of meditations there. So if I say that Mercury is a bit compromised, you can go down, there's a Mercury meditation that you can listen to so that you can reprogram and repattern your subconscious mind to make up for whatever Mercury is, is not going to deliver for you. You can use your free will to boost Mercury within you and you can you know, still gain good results from Mercury, possibly, you know. Um, we've got free will. We are the makers of our lives very much. So, yes, there's astrology, but yes, there's our free will. And as a Vedic life coach, I really like to cater to both. 
Okay, let's take a look at Venus. So July 4th is shifting from your 12th house to the first house. So we're looking pretty good here. Financial gains you might spend in an indulgent way. You might travel, you might do all kinds of things when Venus is in the uh, 12th house. Uh, travel is great, romance, sure. And then Venus shifting into the first, Venus loves being in the first. So this is great. There's wealth, there's happiness, good for education, great for being with your significant other, great for meeting a significant other. So that is definitely something to look forward to, your Venus energy. Let's have a look at Jupiter for you. Uh, Jupiter is in retrograde, it's in your third house, and he is going forward July the 11th. So yeah, okay, so if you're finding that business growth has been slow, finances have been slow, yes, it could be the sun, it could also very much be your Jupiter as well. So yeah, this, this is another slightly compromised energy and, and one that you might want to listen to a meditation for. Uh, you know, relationship with siblings, friends, not great. And the other thing is, if, if you don't have time to listen to a meditation, don't worry. You know, by hearing this news, you can use your free will to work on this anyway. So if I've said that your relationship with your siblings or friends won't be great, that's brilliant. You know that now. So when you're with them, you can be a bit more conscious. You can be a bit more aware that, yeah, my, my energies aren't the strongest right now, so I'm not going to overextend myself. I'm not going to overpromise, right? So be careful with your health. Yeah, make a short pilgrimage-style trip. So if you did want to get away, uh, it could be a pilgrimage style of trip, and that can be a really nice thing to do. That can be, you know, going back to the town where your father grew up or, or, or those kind of things, or a spiritual trip or you know, you want to go to a retreat or a yoga retreat or something like that, um, now's a really good time. Jupiter's going to be there for quite a while. Let's do a little check-in to Saturn. Saturn is in your fifth house. I think we had a look at Saturn a couple of months ago. We're having a look at him now. Um, we're just doing <clears throat> a bit of a check-in because he's going to be in the same spot for a while. It takes him two and a half years to change signs. So as you may already know, um, you might have some tensions around various things. Yeah, so again, Saturn could be uh, in the background there. So issues potentially at home with your spouse, uh, issues potentially with your business partner. This is not a great time to be investing um, in terms of large gains, in terms of like the stock market and that kind of thing. You just want to be careful with that. It doesn't mean don't do it, but it just means um, if Saturn's energy is involved, there's going to be some delay, right? And <clears throat> I always believe that Saturn is our friend and any delay he gives us is for a very, very, very good reason. So you do count your blessings with Saturn as well. You go slowly, but you count your blessings. You kind of go, oh, good. I'm glad that there's been this delay because it's mean. it means that I've had time to, especially when it comes to money, I've had time to accrue more finances to invest or I've had more time to really get good at that skill or I've had more time to fill in the blank, you know. Um, Saturn's delays are with purpose, I believe. Let's have a look here. It's a good time to stay calm with family um, and students. You'll have to study harder. That's another feature of... of um, of this particular Saturn. So Leo Moon, I hope you can make the most of your Venus energy because it is absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much for stopping by and we are going to welcome Virgo Moon. Virgo Moon, welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm so glad you stopped by. Let's take a look at your faster moving planets and then we're going to have a look at your slower moving planets, Jupiter and Saturn. We're going to take care of Mars Ketu and Rahu in the big overview. Okay, so if you want to watch that, just click on the big overview and you'll get to see what's going on there because that kind of applies to everybody. Uh, let's have a look here. So Sun is moving on July 16th to 17th, it's shifting from your 10th house to your 11th house. So, oh yeah, yeah, I remember, yeah, yeah. Your, your month is great, right? Okay, so this is looking really, really good. I'm loving all this for you. Yours is the most exciting. I, when I was going through your and I'm thinking, 
Do I know any Virgo moon friends? How can I hang out with some of these Virgo moon people? Look at this. I mean, you've got easy money coming in according to the sun, hanging out in the 10th, and it's moving into the 11th. He's happy there as well. The gains just keep increasing. So we've got promotions, new opportunities. There's a lot of growth. There's gains, there's promotions. Investments go up. I mean, your sun is sensational. Let's have a look at Mercury. Mercury's in the 11th house uh, and due to retrograde. Last time he covered three different houses. This time, because of retrograde, he's just about to leave the house, but then he goes back in. So he's spending a lot of time in your 11th house. Um, and this is fantastic. You wouldn't want him anywhere else. Look at that. Boost your income. Good time with siblings, friends. Uh, new hidden talent you might uncover. Income. This is the time that you could be setting up multiple sources of income right? The universe is giving you green lights to really go ahead and do all this stuff. It's great. Um, and if we'll get to it, don't worry. If, if, if you're not experiencing all this wonderful stuff, there might be a reason and we're going to get to it. Um, Venus. Okay. So Venus July 4th is shifting from your 11th house to the 12th house. Beautiful again. Venus loves being in these houses. So we've got expansion in your wealth, uh, more fame, you know, great social scene, promotions, uplift to your status, financial gains, indulgence, travel, romance. It's beautiful. It's all going on for you, Virgo Moon. I am absolutely loving this for you. Uh, gosh, if I could just like push my moon <laughs> to this place, that would be quite cool. All right, let's have a look at Jupiter. Yeah, I mean, it's just sensational here too. Jupiter is in your second house. He's been retrograde but he's going to go forward July the 11th. So what are we looking at here? Again increase in wealth, gains, awards, recognition, Midas touch, uh, relationship with your family improves, health picks up, great time for childbirth. So I mean this is so beautiful. If you're a Virgo moon and you're scratching your head and you're going oh, I'm not experiencing any of this, this could be why. It could be your Saturn. Uh, we're going to do a little brief check in with Saturn. We met him, I think, a couple of months ago. We're going to come and have a look at him again. I mean, you, you've got some financial ups and downs um, due to Saturn. Uh, so it might well be, if you're kind of scratching your head around all the other planets going, well, I don't know, you could have some quite strong Saturn. Um, Saturn could be uh, your ascendant. Saturn could be aspecting your ascendant. Saturn could be conjunct a whole bunch of planets. There's lots of reasons. Um, there's also your divisional charts. Saturn could be a really major player in those. There's a lot of reasons. So, um, you know, Saturn's not thrilled to be in the fourth house. So we've got financial ups and downs potentially. Um, you've got to be careful around your health. Uh, be careful with property dealings of any kind. Conflicts, possibly arguments at home and at work. Um, litigation is also possible, competition, competitive energies. So what can I say? But, you know, um, I don't know if I mentioned the meditations for you. I probably haven't. I've mentioned it in every other sign. Basically, if there is a planet that's compromised for you, I hope I'm not doubling up saying this twice. That would be embarrassing. But um, basically, if there's a planetary energy that's compromised for you, you can tune into the meditation. It's in the description below. And if I say, say for example, your Saturn is a bit compromised, you can use your own free will to boost up that Saturnian energy within you. So, hi Virgo Moon. Sorry about that. It just cut out. Uh, I was wrapping up with you anyway. And really, I was. that was a wrap up of um, part one, basically. We're good with part one. Uh, I'm going to record part two now. So off I go to do that. But thank you so much for stopping by. And I'm really wishing you well. And you know what? I'm seeing lots of beautiful, wonderful things for you. So enjoy. Enjoy this exciting time in your life. You've got some terrific planetary energy. So enjoy that. Thank you for stopping by. Mm -hmm.